Welcome to this video blog. I'm Mike James and I coordinate discipleship and assimilation for the Kentucky Baptist Convention. And we're glad to have today as our guest, Dr. Steve Rice, pastor of First Baptist Church Shelbyville. And I've asked Steve to come specifically to talk about Membership 101, that process of involving uh, new members in the life of your church. Steve, thank you for being with us today. Thanks for inviting me. Steve, share with us, I know there's a lot of resources out there, and I know that you have uh, uh, really gathered from a lot of sources your uh, specific Membership 101 process. Share some resources that uh, folks could go to, books, whatever, sure. uh, to help build their unique Membership 101 materials. Sure. I think that two best assimilation books uh, on the market. I know the KBC has copies of those. You've given those out to, yes. to a lot of folks. Is uh, Dr. Gary McIntosh's book, Beyond the First Visit. It's kind of an encyclopedia of assimilation. Mm -hmm. It touches on every aspect, uh, gives a broad stroke, specific details in certain areas. It's excellent. Uh, but then Nelson Searcy has written a book called Fusion and it basically is based on his system of assimilation. And it looks in a much smaller, uh, through a much smaller window, at how to follow up with first time guests, how to attract them to begin with, and then how to follow up with first time guests, get them back the second time. Mm -hmm. What do you do when they come back the second time? That small window uh, of assimilation. Excellent book as well. Uh, both of those are just absolute must-reads for any pastor who is working on assimilation in his church. And then specifically a membership class, of course Dr. Chuck Lawless did a study just a few years back, it's still very fresh, very pertinent, uh, about membership classes in churches that are effective, what should be taught in those classes, uh, who teaches those classes, how long they normally last, and he packaged all of that in a book uh, called Membership Matters. Mm, yes. It's an easy read, a good, good book. Uh, and so I would recommend that book to pastors mm. as well. Mm, good idea. I know, Steve, a lot of our uh, listeners may be a pastor of a church and uh, they're the only staff member. They may not even have a secretary. Mm -hmm. uh, they could be bivocational. And uh, some of our churches that are smaller might not have 8, 10, or 12 people each quarter join. They may have eight or ten people for the year that join, which is a different dynamic on a sure. membership one-on-one -on -one class. What would be some suggestions to a smaller church on doing something uh, with each new member uh, maybe and their family to get them involved that a, that a pastor at a smaller church could do effectively? Mm -hmm. I think I'd still take a similar approach. Uh, you may not offer the class as often uh, because you, you you may want to get two or three different folks in it, uh, four or five. I don't think the number uh, matters all that much uh, other than I wouldn't want too many in it. I don't think you'd mm -hmm. want a hundred in it. It'd be difficult to build relationships uh, with a hundred. But a smaller number in some ways is almost better because you would really be able to build those relationships uh, with folks. Uh, there's lots of good resources out there. One in particular, uh, I, I would probably say if, if I was a pastor, it's what I did when I was the only pastor at my first full-time church, had a part-time secretary. Uh, I simply bought uh, Rick Warren's material and uh, from SaddlebackResources.com and when I purchased it, right now you could purchase Membership 101 for about 98 bucks, I think and uh, Dr. Warren will give you uh, full access to the material to rework it, to rewrite it. If I was a single uh, a pastor where I was a single staff member, I wouldn't start from scratch. Mm -hmm. I would take some good work like that and uh, I would rework it. I'd write in our vision and our mission statement uh, and use some of that work that had already been done uh, to kind of get me on down mm. the road. Mm. So that'd be a good tool mm. uh, for folks to purchase. Good idea. I know one thing that we have discussed uh, in doing any type of a membership one-on-one -on -one format is just the need for members to connect with their pastor, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's a smaller church or even a medium size or a large size. You know, they see us 
behind the pulpit sure. often, and we may teach a Sunday school class or a discipleship class, but regardless of the size, this is the time where you can build relationships. Share with mm -hmm. us kind of how you have done that, the effectiveness of in your membership 101 classes of quickly get, getting to know sure. new people. Practical stuff, you know, we'll wear name tags. Lanyards are preferred. You can buy them for a dollar and keep them, you know, forever. Uh, practical stuff like we'll put the name, we'll put two name tags inside the lanyard, one facing this way and one facing the other way. Because invariably, no matter uh, which way, it's always facing the wrong right, way. That's right. <laughs> uh, so regardless which way it's facing, you can see their name. Uh, and first name only, usually in there. And uh, I don't wear my title, you know, I'll just, it'll just say Pastor Steve. It's what folks usually call me. And we'll, uh, if you have time, and that's why I think it's important to build in time for this, uh, at each uh, class, we'll do something at the beginning that'll help us get to know folks. I might say, hey, tell us your name uh, on this first night and tell us just a little bit about your family. And then the next time we may say, uh, hey, remind us now, remind everyone your name. We can see your name type, we know, but it helps to hear it out loud. And then tell us, a couple of your favorite hobbies. Someone may say, hey, I, I like motorcycles. And what'll happen is after class, you'll see that person talking to someone else about motorcycles after the class. Mm. Or someone else will say, I ride horses. And those people will begin to connect with one another. And frankly, it helps you as a pastor to know people's interests. You kind of have something mm. casual. Uh, to talk with them about in the hallway to show, hey, I'm interested not only in spiritual uh, portions of your life, certainly I am, but I'm interested in you. Amen. And if you know what interests them, uh, that's a way to connect to them. Amen. Steve, I was a, a member of a church once on the staff actually, and uh, uh, the pastor had everyone that had joined uh, each month over in their home. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that he did that I thought was very helpful and God was blessing, we had a lot of new people coming in, but everybody went around and shared who they were, but also how they got to our church. And so we were getting immediate feedback sure. on some things we were doing ministry-wise that was being effective. So they would talk about someone that shared Christ with them mm -hmm. at work, or they, they saw some musical that we did or whatever it mm -hmm. was. And that, that really was, a, we were getting some immediate sure. feedback that was very, very helpful. Have you found, Steve, that uh, in regards to the size of a church, uh, there, if you connect with people in relationship, getting to know them by name like you have mm -hmm. done, have you found that that makes a difference in their response when you preach on Sunday morning in terms, you think they listen to you maybe more effectively knowing that you've spent some time and gotten to know them? I think common <laughs> sense uh, would tell you there, there's no question. Yeah. Uh, you can't be everyone's best friend, uh, but you can be friendly and they can see that you're their pastor and you're interested in them. And if all you do is prepare sermons and preach and you leave the leave people out of the equation, you know, we don't just, it's semantics, but we don't just preach the Bible, we preach the Bible to people. Mm, right. Of course we preach the Bible, but we can never leave the dynamic of people out of that. You know, Jesus taught the people. Jesus said to people, come follow me. That's why he told us, go make disciples. And, and how do we do that? We teach the Bible to other people. We help them to grow in their faith. And, and I realize it, it is kind of semantics, but if we have that mindset that people are our ministry, mm. uh, so uh, that's so important. Mm. Amen. Well, Steve, thank you so much. There's great ideas and resources for helping new members get better involved and just raising the expectation. I would challenge any of you there, if your church does not have any type of a, of a new member process, uh, start one. Uh, don't wait till you have it all together. You can gather some of the ideas that Steve have, has just shared and implement that. It does make a difference. More resources can be found on the Kentucky Baptist Convention website or my blog, uh, 2819.org. Thank you so much for being with us today.